Whoa, here we go. So today is Thirsty Thursday. I got my Synergy Cafe mug that was from my friend Bo Young, who will be here soon. He uh, has some delays, taking care of some business. I just saw a little message on Facebook. Then I got another message going on here I got to deal with. Let's connect. This is somebody that grew up in Fridley. I didn't know that. So today, guess what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about focused attention, focused intention. Where is he? I'm going to go get Bo. He's got to be in the green room or something. He's late. Hi. I'm not late. I am not late. <laughs> no, I'm not late. How are you? I am late, actually. So here's the thing. I got to my computer, and I went to log in, and I, it said, oh, we're pushing updates. Do not turn your computer off. Please be patient. Ooh, this is taking longer than planned. So then I scrambled, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to use my phone, right? And then uh, right as I was about to hit the button on the phone, my screen flashed, and here I am. So <laughs> I'm here, buddy. That's technology. You know, there's talk about a big blackout coming to the East Coast, you know? Let's not have that. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah, good enough. I'll do it a pinch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you make it to AGC, uh, what was it, last night? Um, No, I did not. That was the one in Minnetonka? Yeah. I think I saw that it was up there, but I did not make it over there. I would have liked to have made, made that one. Um, yeah. Our friend and mortgage extraordinaire, uh, mortgagee person extraordinaire. Um, yeah, I missed it. I don't like that I missed it, but uh, yeah, it's it's been a challenge. I haven't. Hey. I've actually missed a lot of stuff lately. Life has been bit very busy. But you uh, you did you did not miss a lot of stuff too. That's true. <laughs> You've been doing something. You've been busy. But, well, yeah, yeah. So I uh, my wife and daughter just returned uh, a couple nights ago from a New York City trip. And, New York City. Yep, they went to New York City and they're back safely. And uh, yeah, and work has been busy, and we've had claims and and lots of action. Things are good. Things are good. <laughs> you know, well, there's 24 hours in a day, and you just fulfill them with whatever you can. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to fill them all the way. I'm a huge fan of rest. Well, you know me and my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a challenge yeah. with the stuff that I'm doing because our topic here today is. Dun, dun, dun. Focused intention. Okay, no, let's I talk about it. The, the topic because I was looking for a graphic to do it, and I saw that blurred guy, and I thought well, he's out of focus. That's a good one. Focus, because well played, Brad. I'm challenged with focus. Yeah, I'm with you. I struggle with it. There's times I can get just lost in scrolling or lost in other things. I have, you got to be so intentional, right? Well, you've got. One thing to focus on, like um, I was talking with Travis about, I says, you know, you got you got a lot going on. It's pretty impressive that you're doing that. He goes, well, because I have a challenge with it. He says, well, I got one brand. You know, yeah. he's dealing with one brand. True. True. That one right there, Accelerated Global Connections. Whereas I've got <laughs> Magic Red. I got the Magic Marketing Tool. I got... What else do I got here? Give your event stuff. You got the Magic Brad show. Yeah. I got stuff. Now I can't I can't get that out of there. What did I do? I don't know. We're ruined. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is with uh, focus, and I use the analogy of the magnifying glass where you're trying to burn it with the sun on the burn the yep. wood. Sure. If you move it, it cools off and it never burns. Never mm -hmm. happens. It's true. But if you're moving it around, it gets warm, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's kind of my thing is I'm moving that magnifying glass over into Magic Bread Entertainment or helping AGC or working on the yard or I'm just doing a lot of different things. But it does take a lot. To, uh, it's easier, I think, if you can concentrate, like with your business. Yeah. You're in the insurance business. You go into the office every day. It's, it's like yeah. clockwork. Yeah. Something happens that way. But yeah. if you don't have that focus, you know, it's a, it's like the garden. If I don't take care of the peas and I just take care of the tomatoes, pretty soon we don't have any peas. You think there's a problem being too focused? Boredom? Well, no. So, for example, 
Uh, you, you said the garden, right? So it made me think of uh, last year, my wife and I did a, a substantial amount of like landscaping as, as in like hauled just tons of rock, right? And, and improved rock gardens and things like that, okay? So the landscaping was improved. Uh, earlier this spring, I added a swing that ha that's hanging below my deck and it's the most glorious place. And it just, it's just a very peaceful spot to sit and just kind of swing. Right. Mm -hmm. However, this guy here can't relax, can't focus back there. Why? Because I'm so focused on any little weed that wants to pop through my rocks or grass that tries to grow. Like I get up. I pull it. I go sit back down. I get. I look around. I find more. So I, I'm too focused on having like this tidy environment, and I can't focus on me relaxing, right? But maybe that's relaxing for me. Is to there's fulfillment of pulling. There is that. My wife satisfied. goes out and she likes to. She takes a break once in a while from the desk and goes out and pulls weeds. She, it's therapeutic for her. Yeah. So maybe that's it because it's like instant gratification when you pull one, right? Maybe that's it. But there it feels compulsive to me right now because I. My wife said, "Just would you just relax?" Can't. It's just a it's a mindless kind of thing. It's like yeah, <laughs> you know, you don't have to think about pulling weeds, but it is therapeutic. Yeah, the well, it's yeah. when you when you then you look down and like you can't see one, like that feels good because I've had times in the past where I just didn't care. It was just complete neglect, and it and it you know probably only bothered me when I finally realized that nobody else cares, right? And so. I don't know. It's just a bit obsessive, but you talk about focus here. Like one can be too focused maybe. Um, but yet this whole world of multitasking nonsense, which is really cheating all tasks at the same time um, because you're not being a, a proficient at one. If you're doing two, that's many things me. At one. Huh? That's me. Yeah. That's me. I know that like uh, with our software mailbox power, if I said, okay, I'm working eight hour days and that's all I can do is drill down, contact people on mailbox power. I know that I'd be, getting more people involved with it. You would. Yep. Yeah. Cause if I focused, but yep. like my old business partner, um, he was very, very, very focused. He got into the office at six o'clock. We didn't start till nine, but he's taking care of stuff. And then when he's done, he's done. And then he goes home comes back the next day and does the exact same thing. Yeah. Very focused. Yeah. And because of him, the business got to where it was going. I was more the sub the, support structure that took care of things when things fell apart and put them back uh, again you know like i'd run copies and square things up and put things back where they're supposed to be so that he can go mess them up again yeah <laughs> yeah you know i but, but you're right bit. when you and where you know where your energy flows right it, it's, it's mm -hmm. a key thing so if you're you're right if you stayed really focused on the same mailbox power and I, same thing for me whenever i actually am like actively talking about it and doing things like that it's it it's a, it's a more successful venture. Um, if I pay no attention to it, then nothing grows, right? Nothing happens there. And in my insurance side, if I'm really distracted and I'm not talking to people and I'm not out in the public and I'm not asking chance to quote and that we write less business, you know, and that's not just for me, that's for all the whole team. So yeah, staying focused is really important. So for me, it's like, if I could get really good at time blocking, right. And say here from this time to this time each day, I am going to only allow these things into me, into my, my, my space without any other distractions or whatever. Yeah, I, that'd well, be really good. I, I don't think so. <laughs> and here's why. Because if you block some time, okay, from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock, this is what I'm doing. I block this time. And then your kid comes walking and goes, Hey dad, could we go get some ice cream? You can't see I'm working here, but the yeah. store closes at 10. Well, we'll just have to do it tomorrow. Pretty soon your relationship's gone. And Look what's the point of business if you don't have a family? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I that's a that's a fair angle. I right? think more um discipline and discernment is yeah. more important. Well, I mean, like for example, it, you know, if I said I'm not turning, I'm not allowing Facebook on my phone until 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Like I just can't touch I can't open it, I can't touch it, it's in sleep mode, or or I limit it and say I can only I can only see one hour a day of content, so better make it count kind of thing. Those are good things to probably do. Um, Maybe. To try Maybe. to stay focused <laughs> on the task at hand, because if I'm sitting there looking at, if I'm, you know, working on something, because it, let's admit it, right? If you know you're about to leave or for a trip or vacation, and there are tasks that just have been put off that need to get done, 
you are so incredibly efficient before you know when that deadline's coming. Most, most people, I know I am, I'm really good at closing down tasks, doing my follow-up and getting the job done when I've got that deadline. And I'm focused. I don't allow my phone into my hand for a distraction or whatever, so those feeds that could happen. So um, if that's the way it is, what if we could convince ourselves to do that more frequently than right before a weekend or a trip or whatever? So I, don't I know. think it's a, to me, it's a little bit of both. It's a hybrid situation. You know, we're spiritual beings, but we're physical beings. We've got physical constraints and then we got nebulousness. Yeah. And that whole thing, that other topic, time is an illusion. <laughs> yes. So if, if you've got a date scheduled where you're going on vacation, you got to be to the airport at this time because the flight takes off at that time. That's a priority. and You take care of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I'm sure that if that was the, the vacation of a lifetime that you and your wife were thinking about going on and then all of a sudden your kid was sick, you'd cancel the flight. Yeah, absolutely. It's a matter of priorities. Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, yeah. You can be very, very focused and laser focused and you can – do that uh, jab, 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 right hook and crush it like Gary Vaynerchuk and do a side hustle and grind, and, you know, be very focused and work your ass off. It takes a lot of hard work. And then when you die and everybody goes, well, what was his name again? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? And, and so there is some real value in that too, is just stop taking life so seriously. Right. And if I didn't get this task done or if I didn't do this in time and I didn't waste a little time here, Oh, who cares? Yeah, so I, I I appreciate the perspective, Mr. Magic Brad. Here's our friend Frank. How are you doing, yeah. Frank? Hope you hope you're well. Top of the day to you, Frank. Good day. Yeah, yeah, to me it's a big big balance, but I I I know that if I was to stay focused on some of the things that I I say I want to have done, I know that they would happen. And it's I'm lying to myself saying I want to have them done because I'm sure if there was a gun to my head, I'd get them done. Yeah. You know. Yep. But sometimes, like, I got a big pile of dirt I should move. I'll probably do that today. Instead of working on some stuff, I should probably do some yeah. some business. You know, I got my event expo thing scheduled. Yeah. Scheduled. But, you know, there's some health in the working in the dirt, too, right? Right? If it gives you a little clarity in the head and it does this and that, it's, it's all good. Yeah, but I just got done making these planter boxes over the weekend, and my back is killing me. Yeah. So why am I going to go out there and shovel stuff? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I saw that you were working on it. It's awesome. Awesome. You did a nice job on your porch. I saw that. That was a lot of work too. That was hand hand done with a brush. Yeah, that yeah that's me. that's a lot. That's some backbreaking stuff too. If you're doing like ceilings and higher spots and all that too. Yeah, nope. you just got to do it though. So that's my take on this whole uh, topic of today. Okay. And well, so let's let's good. let's spin that in that whole focus intention. We've talked about the list builder functionality within Mailbox Power, where you can have focused uh, intention and attention on certain people or demographics, right? That's an interesting thing about leveraging technology so that you can set it to be focused on doing a mailing on a focused date to a focused audience. And yeah. once you set it, you can go out and you can weed or you can go on a vacation or you can do whatever. There, I love that's automation. True. I've got a lot of stuff that just people think, Brad, you're so busy. I'm really not. I got a lot more time than most people got it's because it's, it's a lot of it is automated and like, which is beautiful. This you know? is a little off the mailbox power topic, but I'm using a platform that does some automation, but you know, if you do this stuff that's automated, like it's uh, you know, it's testimonial Tuesday and every Tuesday at noon, this thing pops up, people get numb to that and they ignore it. Yeah. So I'm using a thing that changes depending on the weather. The oh, really? Weather changes. Yeah. That's cool. It, it's uh, it's called if this then that. Yes. Yes. But it's hooked up to the the weather underground. Okay. Yeah. So if it gets cloudy in my area, then it will tweet this. If it gets sunny, yeah, it will Facebook that. Yeah. So if this then the that is the, the, it's like it has no boundaries. Like it, it's endless possibilities with that. I know. When I first learned about that, I saw you could set up, um, um, I have some like smart light bulbs mm -hmm. in my kitchen, right? I mean, we've talked about that. And I could set it up that if this and that, if the Minnesota Wild score a goal, my lights would flash blue. 
Right. <laughs> right. That would alert me. It, they would flash red if the game, as soon as the game, the puck was dropped and the game started. Like that concept, those things exist with the smart technology to make it happen. If this, it was, hey, if I leave my house, these, these lights stay on, these lights turn off. When I come home and I'm literally like a half a block from my house, I can set up that certain lights are on and my, and my radio, my music's playing. I, yeah. you, know, you can set scenes that are all time based on when you're showing up. It's incredible. But uh, from a marketing standpoint, I would warn someone not to um, automate it so much that you're di- disconnected from it. Totally agree. Look, if, if something automatically posts something, I yep. will then go on it and I will make a comment, a human comment that's more in that mm-hmm. time so people know that it's not just this robotic stuff doing. I, I agree. Yeah. And because the whole point of this, right, if you're going to be doing something like the automation, like you know, social posts, things like that is for engagement. And if you're getting zero engagement, it's not working. It's time to change it up. And some of that's because it's not, it's the same, same thing over and over. So yeah, I get it. Here's our friend. He's going through some physical therapy. Oh, so he says to the focused audience, sorry guys. <laughs> so there you go. He wants to stay, but there's other priorities. You just got to deal with it. Hey, no, that's fair. Thanks for trying to stay focused. That's right. right. Yeah. Still yeah, focus I, I, on something else. I, you know, have you ever like, uh, I mean, there's certain people probably in your network or in your sphere of influence that seem to always be dialed in. They seem to always be focused. And there's so, I know some people like that. And I like from afar, it's not that I envy them, but I, I am, I'm impressed. And, but yet for all I know, that's just the show that's put on behind the scenes could be just an absolute mess. Right. Like I've been into, uh, like, I, I remember, I just think I remember going into uh, a friend of mine and he's a, he's a corporate executive and walking into his office and it was the most tidy thing you've ever seen there. Everything was so organized. There was only one little tiny stack of paper, right. That he was working on. And it wasn't even, it was like a couple proposals or whatever. And I'm like, my, so you're either have nothing to do all day or you're really, really organized. Now that was a planned visit. If I just popped in one day, would it look the same? You know what I mean? Like you have to vacuum, right? We can all make it look pretty good. Um, but yeah. So, but but there are a few people I know that it just seems like they can just get that's how their mind is wired, is that they yeah. are very task oriented and they just their fulfillment is checking things off of you know, when you go over to someone's house and it looks like a hotel lobby. Uh-huh. Right? Nothing on the tables. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. My desk is full of stuff. You know, my, yeah. my wife likes to tidy up when guests are coming over. Yeah. I'm more like, let them see how we live. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So I've, we've taken not heat, but we've had comments like that, but our house generally is like you just described where it, it, it looks like it was just cleaned. Um, it's just the way we, we've all kind of, now if you go into my daughter's bedrooms, holy smokes. If you look at the top of my dresser that's in my closet, holy smokes. But overall, the rest of it is pretty organized and clutterless. Um, but yet, when I go into a place that has that, I, it's, I, it's like I don't, I don't judge it. Like I get it. We all are wired a different way. You well, know? I know if you go into a, a you know a spotless hotel and you went into the janitorial closet, it's probably not all tidy like right. that. Right. You yeah. go into the basement of the place; it's probably a different story. So let me ask you: What are you trying to be focused on today, Brad? <sighs> Nothing. Focus. <laughs> Nothing. You want to relax. No, I don't want to relax. I'm always doing something, but I'm doing a lot of different things. Um, so I guess that's my focus is it's focused on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to grab a wheelbarrow and fill up that thing of dirt, and move it into our little planter boxes. That'll take me an hour. Um, I'm, I've already done some posts this morning when I woke up at five o'clock. I've already threw some stuff out there. Okay. So I think I focus on a lot of different stuff, but it's a lot of different agendas. You know, I've got mailbox power. I got yeah. my event planner expo. I got the dirt. Um, <laughs> I grab a uh, ice cream cone. Yeah. Today's a good day for an ice cream cone. My, M- my M&Ms. I got those. It's a great day for a walk today. Right. Great day for some outdoor stuff. An ice cream cone along a boardwalk would be a glorious thing. And then I do that little walk a little, mental get away from stuff you know put the phone in the pocket yeah so i really don't have anything totally focused i've got some still some challenges that i'm trying to 
um, make work. And that's part of why this topic came up. Cause I know that again, if I wanted to really make something work, you grind at it, but then what if it vaporizes and goes away? Mm. So putting all of my eggs in one basket, you know, to make an omelet, what if I don't want an omelet? Yeah. You might want them scrambled. I don't know. There you, you know? go. You may so start with eggs a different way. I, I was, I've been going through this stuff for a long time as far as this. And I remember finding a book. It was called Living Without a Goal. And I love that book. And it was about not having a goal, but being more serendipitous and, and taking advantage of stuff as it shows up. Well, that's really interesting. It's yeah. a, it's a, there's a friend of mine, Ron Orr. He, uh, I call him the Oracle. His last name yeah. is O R R. I call him naturally. Oracle. Yeah. Cause he's, he, you, you ever study the law of attraction? Uh huh. Where you mm -hmm. set your intention and just be aware of it and it attract stuff to you. And yeah. It's not like magical kind of stuff. It's just being aware of something. And of course, that idea will come into your head and then you can take advantage of it. You, you're trying to, you manifest something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, for example, my, my wife and daughter were in New York City, right? And mm -hmm. and my daughter w was fell in love with the city, absolutely loved it. And she sat there and was like, went to, uh, they went to New York University and she was outside of it. And she says, I, I'm going to manifest me going to law school here. Like I, I could see this and she's got to do a lot of different things. Right. If that's truly the target. Um, but without like trying to pursue it and do that, nothing, you won't hit the target. Right. You won't end up there. You know? So you try well, to attract setting it. that intention is the first thing and, and then visualizing that. And I mean, the first step is she's there. Yeah. Now she knows what she wants to have. And the, the visualization is there. And the stuff is going to come into play because when she's out browsing on the internet or whatever, she's going to see somebody that talks about some New York lawyer that's mentoring people for free. Right, and, right. Then it starts as an online course where she can do it from Hutchinson. Yep, there you Most, go. That's what's going to happen because it's inevitable that those things are in your periphery. Yep. And eventually it's going to happen. Now, yeah. if you're not focused on that periphery and all of a sudden you just turn your head and say, I'm going on a boat and I'm going to take up checkers it's and it, probably checkers. not going to go to law school in new york hey there's nothing wrong with checkers i will say this though uh, uh my wife uh picked up a, a backgammon board for us and played a lot of that in the last couple of weeks and that's a great game are you a board game kind of guy yeah we we get into it as a family sometimes i i there's certain things like i've i haven't played chess in a long time but i always liked the game nothing wrong with checkers backgammon is good there's, There's a ones. place um, next time you're in town. It's Peter's Billiards. Yeah. It's more than just billiards. Yeah, I've been in there. It's There's some amazing things there. They've some got high-end stuff. High -end Monopoly boards yeah. and chess boards. I think they even have Clue. It's yeah. just very high-end. Well, we, we went in there and looked at all kinds of things. And at one point, I was – and I still haven't given up on my dream of uh, having a shuffleboard table at my basement – and but I had no idea the pricing, uh, what it could get to. Holy smokes, you know, and that's where we went and checked it out. Um, speaking of pricing, uh, for those that have watched this, uh, or this is the first time ever we've mentioned Mailbox Power, right? And it's a service that we both use. Um, I don't know if you saw the email, Brad, uh, but there's yeah. a pricing change coming. And for those that, uh, you know, are remotely interested in that. It now is a good time to check it out. I think August 1st at the latest, they're changing the pricing for the for the Pro account. They're changing the pricing for the Light account. Um, but yet, if you sign up and keep it, you get to keep the, the, the lower rate uh, for that, at least the next year or so. But now is the time to do it. Yeah, quick plug. Well, normally, you know, it's not like that. Where it's not this pressure sale. It's not that. But, but the reality is, is, you know, if you can get something for forty nine dollars today per month, and it's going to go to seventy nine for the same features, you might want to lock it down. You know, and it's um, this isn't no sales technique. It's just that everything is. If you haven't noticed that everything is going up. Yeah, yeah. They they have you know a couple penny increase in some paper goods because it's that's the facts. Is everything has gone up and continues to go up. It's a, it's kind of kind of brutal. Um, a lot of people don't look into the depth of that. That um, 
okay, paper goods went up, but why did they go up that high? Well, because right. the trucks that need to deliver the paper have issues. They got to spend more on petroleum to run the truck. And then the tires that are on there cost yeah. a lot of money to build the tires. The guy that's working and driving the truck needs a raise because <laughs> so everything goes up and that's just part of the deal. It is. Yeah. You know, and, and some of it I think is, uh, well, in some cases people have people been given an excuse to just raise prices, but then in a lot of cases it's legitimate. Right. Uh, I will say that I'm not impressed with gas prices um, in, in this factor. Uh, there's no question of all the factors that go into pricing gas. One thing that's continuing to drive that is greed. Um, <laughs> there's just no doubt about it. When you got record profits uh, in the first quarter and continuing on, you you could still make a lot of money as an oil company, but lower that back down. That that but options it's capitalism at its finest. It's there. It's this is not something set by the president. It's not something set by Brad or Bo. It's th there's a lot of factors that go into that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I had to go pick up my wife from the airport and daughter, and I drive past the community that's about 10 miles away from here, and it was the lowest price gas that I had seen in a while. It was $4.64 a gallon, right? It's $4.79 in my hometown, everywhere the gas station's here. So I'm like, wow, it's 15 cents lower. I should have stopped. I'm like, yeah, I'll just do it on my way back. I drove to the airport, picked him up, drove back. By the time I got back, it was $4.81. And I am not convinced that the gas that was already in the tanks underground somehow magically went up 15 cents a gallon just in that hour or two. It's garbage. It, you know, it, it's, but yet market allows for that to happen. And I'm all in favor. There are people that uh, work the stock market that have software that kind of measures how all this stuff is going with foreign yeah. exchange and all that kind of stuff. But a way around it is get yourself an electric vehicle. Yeah. Well, which of course has, it costs, it, you know, I, I wish that the, the messaging was better, right? Like, um, you know, carbon emission free kind of thing. No, no, it takes certain natural resources to create the electricity that's going to power and restore the battery. Like just, just keep the message right. Right. You kind of like go back to uh, um, Travis saying, you know, this social distance, that was, that was, they needed to stop that. That was not the right phrase used in the beginning. Right. Physically distance, but socially engage. Mm -hmm. Right. So the words matter and, and not, selling that properly right but no i i'd love to have an electric vehicle i i, I it does it. make sense i would love to have a top a conversation on this whole thing because i have a different take on a lot of this that uh, if you don't like the price of electricity and you don't like the price of gas get a bike yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if you don't like pedaling a bike stay home yeah you know there's always a solution just avoid whatever it is you're doing and put yourself yeah. change your focus to something different right. Well, you know, and the interesting thing is that, you know, I, we know that these prices are crushing some trucking companies and a lot of different people are getting crushed. Right. But it's interesting because if I owned a, let's see, excuse me, if I own, if I was driving a Suburban and I get 12 miles a gallon daily, good prices or bad prices. And then all of a sudden gas went up and doubled. I mean, it's hard to complain. Like I already knew I was driving something that's not fuel, it not economical at all. But yet somebody that's driving a Honda Civic that gets 42 miles a gallon, this doesn't hurt as bad because mm -hmm. they, they bought something intentionally that was going to get deliver that kind of performance. You know what I mean? Like and it, to each their own, they all like want different vehicles and different things, but it everything's going up and that's just what it is. But or if somebody works there. from home or works from your phone, it doesn't affect you at all. You're Correct. Kind of and running. you know what? You just have to be uh, so if you're going to make a trip and there's a couple times a day you were going to go grab things, you know what? You just consolidate. You do it all in one. Hey, when I got up on yeah. Sunday to go get donuts, <laughs> right? Special trip to go get donuts for my little one and I. Uh, I also took that same trip and popped into Target to grab the things I was going to need that day instead of doing two separate trips, right? Sure. You know, and problem solved. There. You didn't Either tell way, the little one that though, right? You said you made a special trip just to get donuts. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I can, I can't. People that know me well enough know I cannot use her as an excuse for me getting a pastry. It's generally for me. I just happen to get one for her too. You know? it, when it went it, years ago, because we had a thing like literally every Sunday, she used to go with me in her pajamas, and we'd go walking through the store, and we'd go get donuts and go home. It's awesome, right? Special stuff. And yeah. now she doesn't usually go with me because she's not up till noon in the summer. 
Um, so I go pick it up now. But, but I wanted it for me as much as I want to do it for the You're the butler. I love donuts. So there's that. Well, we've gone 30 minutes. We're about 12 minutes past what we should be. You know that. That's okay. Yeah. It's interesting stuff when we talk about these. I th you know, going back to the focus thing, I yeah. think part of the reason that I'm not focused is the, the putting all your eggs in one basket. I like to have a lot of different things, a lot of different balls in the air and yeah. just keeping on going. And I've got, you know, mailbox powers making me a little bit of money. I've got some of my synergy collaborative stuff making a little bit of money. I'm doing my exports making a little bit of money. I got my retirement. I got my investments. I got little projects here and there that are making a little bit of money. And that's why I have free time because those things are doing stuff rather than getting paid per hour, which yeah. would limit me. I'll do a quick plug. I, I, I don't Good. know if you followed the uh, Nathan France page much lately, um, mm -hmm. but he's been uh, Nathan France and RPG coffee have been really pretty active uh, with videos on social media and Facebook and a YouTube page and promoting RPG um, real people giving coffee. It's great coffee. And anyways, I'm just going to do a quick plug because they've been talking more about this just in this last week about being an affiliate. They want to reward people that talk about their coffee and their brand. And I've been an affiliate for a RPG for a year plus. Um, it probably almost two years now. I don't know. But, you know, it makes makes a little bit of money here and there, uh, rewards you for sharing the idea. And it's great coffee. Like I mean, it, it just is great coffee. I feel better when I drink that coffee over other coffee. Um, yeah. And uh so anyways, check out RPG Coffee. Um, I've, I think I have the domain RPGdeal.com. Um, and uh, it takes you to the same spot. So, so anybody, I don't know if you've done that, Brad, but it's, it's worth checking out. I got an affiliate page. You can be an affiliate and you're good. It's a great thing for organizations too, like um, veterans clubs and things like that. If you want to have kind of a little fundraising too, it's, it's a pretty solid setup. And they give fifty percent back to first responders, and so their mission's great. The coffee's great. That? Uh, that's PGC. I don't know what you're doing there. RPG deal. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? Ignore what I did. If you want to get a hold of him, go see Bo. His name is right yeah. here. Yeah, Bo. little guy down here. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta bounce. It's been great. Okay. Deep thoughts. Uh, you have a great day. Okay, dope, buddy. Later, buddy. Always fun talking with Bo. I'm going to sign this one off. That's it. We're gone. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting world we live in here. Okay, peace, love, and happiness. Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be good. Be kind. Oh, by the way, thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh.